I'm Paolo. I'm product security engineer of uh, SUSE. And uh, in application, I, am, I am an application security guy. I mean that I break code for living. And I, I hope I also have people fixing too. Um, you can find me as uh, the sponge uh, almost everywhere. So if you need to keep in contact with me, feel free. Or to use the, the SUSE email or whatever, whatever the month. In this talk, we are going to talk about uh, uh, what it does it mean to be a product security engineer and how this affects to uh, SUSE and, and open SUSE distribution, of course. And I would like to start with uh, um, the question. Do you think is open, source, is open source code secure by default? I mean, how many do you feel this way? Raise your hand. To my colleague, <laughs> they were joking. Okay, um, this is this is my uh, my uh, viewing for the perspective I had uh, uh, standing uh, with the Italian community developer or IT guys. That some somewhat the open source code is seen as secure because the code is open, widely uh, visible by anyone. And there is such a misconception, misconception that security is inherited in, uh, in some way. The quick answer is no. The open source code is not secured by a somewhat external, um, external hand uh, putting the, man, the hand on the keyboard. Because we are full of uh, uh, vulnerabilities and dangerous ex exploit also in uh, in open source, uh, in open source code, uh, the main blocker. Uh, I mean, uh, I launched on uh, on my profile link on my LinkedIn profile a poll. Um, I asked the people uh, if you if you contribute to open source project. Um, sorry, can, can we please uh, lower down the? Uh, thank you so much. Um, I asked if people contribute in their spare time to open source projects, and if yes, in which kind of percentage of their work time. 70% of people answered no. I don't contribute in open source projects. And this is pretty scary, because I guess in their organization, they would use open source. They would uh, uh, use lib third party libraries in their code, and so they inherited all the vulnerabilities these third party bring with them. Um, I also asked, uh, if you answer no to the previous question, why? And uh, surprisingly, uh, a lot of people answered, because I'm not a developer. And this is one of the blocking stuff. Um, at least for, for my vision, uh, security researcher doesn't seem so keen to sit down and write code. Uh, and this must be changed in somewhere. They must be uh, involved, they must be uh, convinced to contribute to open source code. Uh, but the most important uh, thing people block, uh, people is blocked for contributing in open source is the lack of time, okay? Uh, companies doesn't, uh, doesn't allow people from writing uh, for auditing uh, open source libraries they use in their solution, and then uh, it's just uh, for uh, as a um, uh, let's say missionary word. I mean, in the spare time, if they want, they will contribute. This is very very good, but maybe not all have this kind of sensi sensitivity. There is also a, a strong storytelling. Um, field that doing offensive uh, is more attractive, it's more sexy. Uh, you break stuff, uh, you do denial of service, you write an exploit. Woo. Uh, so security researching is going only in uh, one direction. But maybe we can, change, uh, we can change the story. So I would like to talk uh, about you, uh, uh, talk you about what I did every time uh, in the proactive team. Um, as as the, my colleague uh, um, told yesterday, uh, security team has a reactive side and a proactive side. A reactive side 
take care about of uh, vulnerability coming from the, uh, the outside world and dispatching them to packages maintainer, giving priorities, uh, trying to make triage. Uh, meanwhile, the proactive side taking care uh, security posture of the product uh, before it, it, it ships to customer and to, to the community. Uh, one of my main tasks uh, is, uh, and main task of the proactive guys is doing a source code audit for the packages. And doing source code audit is, mean, is, a, is a task made by two different approaches. A statical one and dynamical one. Static analysis means reading the code, trying to figure it out, pattern that introduce vulnerability in the code itself. Uh, this is a very time consuming task, a very brain uh, uh, consuming because it, it, it's very hard to write code you didn't write, even the code you write, of course. Uh, or at least for me, because it's very bad. Um, but 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 this is it. it it's uh, it's a uh, true. Uh, you must invest a lot of part of your daytime job in uh, reading code, trying to spot vulnerabilities, and try using a dynamic approach. You run the code and you try to figure it out if what you found is uh, uh, is good or not. Of course, the, this is the main goal to find uh, to find bugs because otherwise. Uh, you are not happy as an attacker point of view. Uh, even more if that bug uh, turned to be exploitable in some way, okay? Uh, then we share the knowledge. Uh, the knowledge is shared uh, uh, in uh, wiki pages that are internal, uh, sometime in the Bugzilla entries of the, of the uh, of, for packages going to, to OpenSUSE. Um, and we do responsible disclosure to the community because we want to, to be fair, we want to make upstream a safer place, um, and that's it. Different, uh, two different kinds of uh, audit are in my daily task, uh, common line and demons and uh, uh, all that doesn't talk HTTP and the web stuff. Web stuff is easy because it's just a web application penetration test. You have to check OWASP top 10 for vulnerabilities and uh, most of the time logical flows affecting the code. So portion of a website that you are not expected to see just mangling around the cookie or stuff like that. Um, doing code on the C, Python, common line the code, uh, common line tools is very hard. But uh, we, are tr we try to, to find uh, some uh, old school vulnerabilities like buffer overflow, format bug, memory issue, race conditioning, and of course also uh, weak um, configuration uh, over the file and over the service itself. Um, I want to entertain you with a little demo of, my, of a possible uh, daytime activity. Chomp is a, a, a great uh, common line utility I've wrote, so everybody must clap at this time, that takes standard input, write standard out without the last, uh, the last character. I know that he, you, can write, you can make it in some in numerous way, but I need uh, a command and I want to have a command line called the Chomp. Um, if I had to review, to make an audit uh, to this tool before going to factory, I, I would like starting uh, looking at the source code that lies in the, um, in the source or directory, of course. Uh, and I have a bunch of uh, helper in my uh, VI configuration because I am a VI guy, of course. And uh, in this case, they are telling me that it's something suspicious on gets, gets function, memset is not secure, please uh, bring attention because uh, this can be, can be causing some problem. Um, my task here is to try to understand what the developer is doing and try to spot uh, security issue. 
I will spot because I introduced the, this afternoon, but uh, maybe for, just for training, I will let you, um, let you uh, to, uh, to, to see the, the, um, the code just for entertaining, spot the, the vulnerability, but don't tell. Also, my, so, moreover, my colleague won't tell which are the, the security problem like that. Uh, okay. We talk about a static analysis of, uh, of the source code. Uh, a dynamic approach would be just compiling the code. Uh, Why not? Ah, okay. The demo effect. Okay, we have the, our binary that lies in source file, source chomp, SRC chomp, and I will try uh, some uh, attacking, attacking pattern. We know that is reading something from standard input. I cheated, I disabled all stack uh, boundary and stack protection, of course. Uh, so, so let's say if there is something bad in the, yeah, the go, there, is some, there is a segmentation fault, there is something bad, we don't know uh, where it is, maybe we want to, uh, to fuzz the code because if it's a, a bigger project, it's not so simple to spot uh, a, a, maybe uh, exploitab exploitable buffer overflow, so we need to uh, to go deeper. Oh. We use American fuzzy fuzzy loop as a C compiler. Reconfigure our source. Okay. We move uh, our binary. In, our, in another directory, where there is uh, just, uh, there is a pre-installed corpus. Since uh, you read the uh, word, I made a corpus uh, using some dictionary, dictionary word, of course. Nothing, nothing magic here, okay? Just try to, to see if fuzzing make me happy and spot some security issue. No. <laughs> you can make it. Uh, this is the, the demo effect and I'm pretty happy happening now. Okay, we've got just a crash. So program is crashed. Um, I can save you your time because it's not a uh, fuzzing, a fuzzing course, of course. But next, uh, next stuff will be uh, using debugger. Make, uh, oops, sorry. Make uh, him to to read the code, the the, um, the core, the core dump caused by the fuzzer. I use a GDB Peda script that are a collection of Python script expanding uh, GDB uh, debugger with uh, um, function useful for exploit writing. Then I look at register. Oh, wow. Oh, because, I, I, because I missed everything. Okay, sorry. Uh, mm, let's do again with echo. So GDB, uh, jump, our core file, and now I have the information I want. We received a signal for a, a signation fault signal, and the register seemed to be corrupted in some way. Starting at this point, I will ask my team leader if it's the case of providing uh, uptime up uh, upstream maintainer and exploit for this vulnerability. He wanted to turn me happy, so he said to me, please, yes, write an exploit. We do the exploit, we contain, we concat the maintainer, and we, we explain the, 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 which, which is the problem. 
and then we agreed with him uh, or with her, of course, uh, a solution and a time frame of releasing the vulnerability to the world. Okay? Now we can head back to boring slides. Okay. So this is the main part, okay? Making audit and trying to break into other people's code in some way. We take care also of packages as well. Uh, I'm one of the people maintaining Z shell. Um, so we can take care about the new releases for provide a new um, uh, new functionality in factory. We take uh, the output of the reactive team guys asking us to port um, um, CV patches to uh, various code stream. And then we, uh, as a maintainer, apply uh, such kind of, uh, of stuff and create a new package to be, to be deployed. And the most, the most funny part of uh, being uh, an, uh, an active attacker and being paid for that is that you found vulnerabilities, and it's very thrilling, you know? Uh, it's thrilling, but it's thrilling because uh, you spot something before the bad guys, and you can go to the maintainer and say, okay, look at this problematic fix uh, widespread fix for all the community is not just open SUSE, it's not just for SUSE packages, but for all that using this uh, kind of, uh, uh, of code, of course. And this is the very, the, the very power of open source and how security is affecting, um, in affecting them. And of course, we provide some also hardening suggestion for our application, for our distribution. We take services and try to make uh, them uh, as more secure as, uh, as possible. Uh, I already mentioned the, the responsible disclosure process uh, we, we are uh, very happy to follow. So let's try to answer the previous question. Uh, is uh, open source secure? Uh, well, the code is there available everybody and this is the very powerful of the philosophy behind the openness, uh, sharing the knowledge. Uh, if you have an, a, a responsible approach that you take care of that code, you take care on how it perform and how it can be broken by other people, by heavy people, uh, you can also invest your personal time um, creating patches, creating pull requests, uh, make tests. Even if you are not a, a professional in the security field, you can test the code, you can spot for bug, maybe casually, maybe a random, or, or even you can just translate documentation. You can help in many, many time. At this point, uh, open source turned to be a secure code when people take care of it. So I would like to thank you very much. And I, I create a GitHub repository. Uh, you can submit uh, issues uh, with your question if you, if you are not uh, unwilling to, to do it uh, now. Otherwise, uh, raise your hand and I will answer. If there are no questions, I would like to thank you so much and uh, enjoy the rest of the evening.